Greetings. Today I'd like to open with this familiar scripture from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 8 to 12. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Something many of us have said in our walk with Christ. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. We see this passage, or parts from it, also quoted in other places in the Bible. And even by Jesus, directly in the Gospels, he does say this. Paul reflected on this condition when he was seeking to share with the Jews in Rome. And he said, some believed and some did not. And then he quoted from this passage. It is a sad spiritual state to be in, but we see through Isaiah that it will always exist right up until the end of the world. It became a passion for me to know the Word of God, and long ago I started a website through which to share with others what God was teaching me. It sounds noble, but my flesh was weak. Sometimes I'd expound on a subject only to discover later more scriptures on the matter that should have been considered. This taught me a vital lesson which is that we need to regard the entire Word of God and its context to know how the Lord is directing us. It isn't that anyone can ever be perfect, but only too often I hear isolated scriptures quoted because it suits the desires of those quoting it. I'm sure you've experienced the same. We need to be careful to avoid this trap. Some of us do it unintentionally. We should not follow after our own lusts and ask the Lord for discernment if we are indeed doing that. Every Christian church claims to follow the Bible, but today we are beholding an utter disregard for it, even straight from the pulpits, unfortunately. It is just what my wife and I are seeing here, or have you also noticed it? I'd like to know if other people are noticing the same thing we are. This isn't a matter of simply needing to learn more, but it is a carving up of what each individual will or will not comply with by their own choice. The Bible isn't God's word to such people. It is a book of advice that they can take or leave. The stories it shares are at best only for encouragement and not for examples to emulate. And teachings from church leaders often directly contradict the words of Scripture. Some of the teachings I've heard like this are, I must lie to get things done. God is always changing. Sin isn't powerful. The devil is no problem. Glad it isn't for him. Jesus isn't the Lamb of God. He's better than that. And you can't understand the Bible. How in the world can you preach or teach the Word of God to those who think they can pick and choose what to follow, and they are denying the very words that they claim as authority in their lives? Before I began to seriously labor in the Word of God, I studied the Bible version issue and easily concluded to follow the King James Bible as God's instructions for every believer. Not some believers, but every believer. All of the translation work was already done by highly qualified men and by superior manuscripts and method. You see, the other side of this rebellion against God's word is that Christian leaders are continually ripping up the Bible and retranslating it Sunday after Sunday, and they cast great doubt on the reliability of this work. They would do a lot better to instruct people on applying the words that God has already preserved for us rather than changing them into something that pleases people and brings them esteem in the eyes of their congregation. The book of Amos chapter 8 gives us prophetic warning about what we are seeing today in regard to God's word. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. My brethren, it's our task today to fight against the flow of this famine personally, through admonishing those around us, and by striving not to fall into that same trap of alterating scriptures like so many, even well-meaning individuals have done. 
Pray that the Lord may heal us and deliver us, granting us eyes that see and ears that hear. Time is indeed very short, and the true word of God contains the roadmap for our deliverance. May God bless this message to your heart.